this episode of ATS-FE, ATS Fully Engaged Battlefield Walkarounds. Uh, ATS-FEBWs are created to discuss the historical situation, components, especially those maybe missing and are required for play, any VETS support, Vassal ATS, uh, if any, and then dive deep into the counters and scenarios and module notes, you know, the other BW and the map. Uh, in today's episode, I'll be taking a look at the Devil's Vineyard, Heraklion, 1941. Uh, so this module obviously covers the German airborne operations on the island of Crete uh, on one at least one small section of it. So this is there was Malim airfield and there was Heraklion airfield. Um, I think there's supposed to be another module that covers Malim uh, that they were talking about, I believe, uh, that did not come to fruition. I think they divided it up and, and made two modules. I'm not 100% sure on that one, but uh, so basically this. This kind of represents that situation in May of 1941. Uh, so what's going to come in the module? You're going to get five and a half sheets of counters. All of, I'm sorry, five half sheets of counters. Uh, two 1941 Fallschirmjäger, two 40 to 43 British, and one Crete weapons sheet that I guess was specifically made for this particular module. Uh, you're going to get nine of the map panels, you know, again, not my favorite presentation since they don't line up great, but whatever. Uh, you're going to get eight scenarios on five sheets of cardstock, two pages of uh, Battlefield walk around, and one, one AFV card for the lovely Matilda. That's it. One AFV. Because it was an airborne op and, uh, you know, not really a big tank battle. So, but still, it's kind of cool to see the Matilda... An operation you don't really get to see that uh, unless you're doing the early you know to brook stuff so so let's go uh, what's not gonna be in the module <clears throat> so in scenario one or one number one uh, stukas enter in flights of four you do get four stukas on the counter sheet however they don't match the counter art in the scenario I think that's because this is the ASL stuka Somebody correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure it is because it's marked with CH, which was one of those things that he had to do because, you know, the lawsuit. But anyway, uh, but other than that, you actually do get those counters. Um, you actually get 24 Stukas in that uh, scenario, uh, but they come in in flights of four, so the four, and the, the four are all you need because they have to leave, those four have to leave before the next four come on, so it's actually pretty good. Uh, I just wanted to call out the uh, scenario doesn't have the right image on there. Uh, number seven calls for a horse counter, which I could not find. Even in all of my other counters from all of my other games, I could not find a horse counter. Um, here it is right here. So anybody knows, you know, what module has horse counters? Apparently they come in denominations of one, two, three, maybe even more. Uh, that would be great. Um, there are a ton of rules around horse counters, which I think we'll get to. So that's, that's what you have it, but you don't get it in the counter mix. Um, Brits, no, I'm sorry, scenario number eight, which is the big macro scenario. Um, you're short a couple of eight, four, nines, and actually three of them, but we'll get to that later. Uh, and technically you have all of the two inch mortars that you need. Um, but again, we'll get to that a little bit later when we talk about the counters and specifically. Um, for number eight, on the German side, you are technically short five of the Waffenhalter counters, um, which are the boxes that they drop the weapons in. Um, so presumably you get to reuse 12, the 12 that originally dropped. However, since you can also flip those over and turn them into kind of like hand-drawn wagons, well, if you drop all 12, recover all 12, flip all 12 over to wagons, you're not going to have enough to finish the scenario. So whatever, um, you know, something to think about and figure out, but you can, you can get to that. So that, that's kind of the module in a nutshell. There is no VAT support. Sorry. Um, not yet anyway, hopefully that'll, that'll uh, make its way out there. Cause I'd really like to play some of this. Um, and obviously I can play face to face, but uh, right now, uh, we're not playing ATS a whole lot face to face, mostly cause we're, we're playing in the tournament, but, uh, so let's move on to the counter. So some of the, some of the, Good things, you get a crap ton of gliders. Let me uh, show you these. They kind of fell out of my counter sprue. They fell off the sprue, but you get a crap ton of these um, DFS 230A gliders, which is awesome, except that they're not used in any of the scenarios in this module. They're for the other module. But hey, at least you get a whole bunch of gliders. 
Uh, you do get Matildas. Where's the Matilda? Here we go. Like I said earlier, nice Matilda, right? Early war tank. Awesome. Uh, good to see it in something other than Tabruk. You get a ton, 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 ton of AAA guns or anti-aircraft guns, which obviously makes sense because part of the whole the scenarios are built around knocking the the uh, AA guns out so that the Germans can take and use the airport. Um, I mentioned before you get these Waffenhalter. Waffenhalter. Anyway, uh, that's what they drop the weapons in because they the, do. You remember the German paratroopers basically drop unarmed. And they have to go find those canisters, get their weapons, and then get down to business. Um, one of the more interesting counters you're going to see... Where'd it go? Is the MAT. So there's an LG-40 MAT, medium anti-tank gun, which I'm assuming is the paradrop version uh, for an anti-tank gun. Look, that's pretty cool. Comes, I mean, green heat round, one to five, you get a heat round, right? Can't be all that bad. Um, but you don't see see those too often. You also have I think that's another counter sheet. You also have some flamethrowers. Hmm. Ah, here we go. Uh, an ein toss flamethrower, which means one toss. I don't know if that's actually what it means, but I'm, that's what I'm taking it as because it's a single shot flamethrower. Fire it. Boom, that counter comes off the map. So that's kind of kind of cool. Um, one interesting thing I did note was that they have this other flamethrower on here. Not that one. Where'd it go? So the symbol was an interesting symbol because I couldn't find any reference to the flamethrower. And of course, now I can't find the counter. Oh, there it is. It's on this sheet. Ha, we'll look at that later. This PRT flamethrower, um, pretty interesting. It's the same symbology as the FP2 that's in the in the regular um, ATS rules, 14.7. But I don't know what this minus two is right here. So I don't know if that's maybe a, a modifier for the fuel roll or something. Uh, anyway, if anybody knows, leave me a comment. Let me know. Um, <laughs> the other thing I find interesting on this sheet is these are all British weapons, but they're in German colors. And moving on from that, you will notice when I said earlier that you technically have the two inch mortars and the 849s you need. For some reason on this sheet, they are printed in, I think those are French blue. Uh, how they ended up in the middle of the counter sheet as French blue, I have no idea. But there you have it. Um, these guys are all British units in German gray. I don't know what to say. And then again, British weapons in German gray and British officers in German gray. Oh, maybe that's the problem. Maybe that's actually a British flamethrower. I'll have to check into that. I'll let you know. Um, one other irritating thing, um, other than those two things. On here, you got some Brit 658s on the back. Notice anything different? Yeah, the color is a little off on the back which I mean it's you know it's not really gonna affect anything it's just a little irritating and I have plenty of other 658 British counters from all the other products but you know um, just one of those irritating things that you have to deal with so you know there's some probably a couple other cool counters to, to, to see but for the most part you've probably already seen them all uh, and something else uh, as for the scenarios uh, so like I mentioned before there are eight most of them are between six and eleven turns with one being a macro scenario of 36 turns, although we'll talk about that just in a, in a little bit more in the middle, a little bit. Most of them use a small portion of the map. Two use the whole map, and one uses maybe three quarters of the map. Of course, one of the ones that uses the whole map is that macro scenario. Uh, the first scenario is pretty interesting. Let me uh, grab that here. Because, as I said before, you get 24 Stukas against all the AA guns, and then basically they just, so for seven turns, they just come on in waves of four, um, and you have to you have to shoot them down, and, or, you know, blow up the AA guns as the Stuka. So that, that's pretty cool. That's pretty interesting. Um, the macro scenario, so it's technically seven turn or uh, 36 turns, but, and of course, Black Death, Death Watch, I like that. What this little red green thing means is you play scenario one, which is seven turns, and then you play scenario two, 
which is 11 turns, so that's 18. So really, this whole scenario is 52 turns of macro scenario. It uses the whole map, uses a bunch of counters. And like I said, you, you technically have most of the counters that you need to play it, so that's it's you know doable. Um, you do get to use a nice Humber, which is cool. Again, something you don't really see a whole lot of, um, except in some of the early war scenarios. Um, overall, the, the scenarios look like pretty good packages, um, mostly infantry, right? Like I said, there's you got one with a Matilda, um, but this was this was a heavily an infantry battle. It was pair trop, pair, pair trop, pair troop, pair troop, jeez, Louise, pair troop drop. Um, so there you have it. So we're gonna move on. Let's get this out of the way because here comes the fun part, right? Let's look at the map. Now, so part of the map that I want to point out is, and see, let's get a nice wide angle shot. That's all nine panels. It's a pretty big play area if you're playing on the whole map. Obviously, a lot of the action will be up here in the airfield, but um, that's where you have it. And what I do want to kind of focus in on a couple of things. So here, we have some new terrain. These are olive groves. Um, so olive groves um, are pretty much like orchards with a couple of extra effects. Um, they don't, but you know, they don't provide blocking. Um, let's see, they're treated as olive grove terrain. Let's see, mostly their orchards and en entry cost is doubled, obviously, because you're working through the, you know, if you've ever seen an olive grove, it's kind of like a, um, a wine, a winery with everything on the hill and everything's tied up between stuff, right? Um, and so you, you get that effect um, on there, which is kind of cool. Uh, the other one we have are reed beds, <clears throat> and those are right here. So obviously, right along the river, draining out into the swamp, you can see this wadi, which apparently is dry, and then a little creek or something. This is this is reed bed terrain. Uh, it's basically brush. <laughs> only fully tracked vehicles may enter a reed bed. Great, there's only one fully tracked vehicle in the game, so keep your Matilda out of there. Uh, but a unit landing in there by pair drop which you don't do in this game. At least I couldn't tell. It didn't look like it because I think they all start on the map, but I could be wrong on that one. No, no, I take it back. You do you do iron them, put them in the sticks, I think, in a couple of scenarios and drop them down, but, you know, uh, don't land in there. Uh, one thing it took me forever to figure out is this new terrain because it kind of looks like uh, rockstone terrain, but it's not because that's rockstone terrain. That is hard ground. Um, it's treated as the other terrain, which is usually open, uh, crates, air bursts, wheeled vehicles like the hum Humbers, right? Might have to get in there. Um, uh, take a, 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 a immobilization tech after they get in there. And so that's that's kind of interesting. Um, otherwise, it's it doesn't really provide you a whole lot of anything. Uh, and then probably the last interesting piece of terrain would be Pine Brush, which is... A little bit tough to distinguish. Let me find a good hex for pine brush. So, brush, brush, pine brush. It's hopefully you can tell that it's a slightly darker green uh, than the regular brush. There you have it. Um, it's just brush, basically. It happens, it's brush at plus 10 is the, is the deal, right? So it's a little taller and actually blocks instead of just obscures. Uh, actually, I think it obscures, but it's a plus 10 obscuring. So I'm not sure how you deal with that. Uh, you know, mostly going to be LOS based. Um, I guess I will. There's a couple of like cliff sides, and I think there's some terraced hills on here somewhere. Um, terraced hills, I remember, hopefully you guys might, if you did it, was from Santa Maria Infante. Um, there was a lot of that in there, so you have that too. Uh, and of course, the biggest thing on the map is the airfield, all that nice, flat, open ground. Um, which becomes a major objective, obviously. A lot of the AAA sets up around here and the, up in this area, right? And the Germans need to, need to knock those out and get rid of them. So that's pretty much the, uh, the highlights of the map. You can tell, oops, you can tell there's a lot of high ground. Uh, overlooking the airfield, which is kind of neat uh, for the defender. Uh, not a whole lot of buildings on the map. Actually, not a whole lot of cover on the map, necessarily. Um, few and far between, so a lot of hindrances, though. So the, the, you got the olive groves and the uh, 
some some regular orchards and um, a lot of brush in that pine brush obviously so it looks like it'd be very interesting fight um, of course the whole pear drop thing is kind of cool too so when you get to the battlefield walk around itself we have some pretty interesting rules we kind of alluded to this before i did before there's one scenario as we talked about that has a single horse counter that apparently doesn't come in the module but you get a quarter of a page and then some of rules on how horses work so i mean there you go if you're gonna give me that many rules you might want to give me the counter Basically, it's just a transportation system, but they can take casualties. You can get handlers. They have movement types, <laughs> assault or gallop instead of run, right? Um, so there you got it. You notice we, we talked about the, um, the AA. So these are they're fixed AA. So if you look really closely, no move, right? And these bofers <laughs> say fixed and no move. I like the vickers said fixed it just says quiet but they have no move so they can't be pushed they can't be moved they're they're in place which is kind of neat um so it's a, a non-mobile target that the germans could typically take out uh we talked about the gliders you know so interesting that you get those and you don't get to to use them but that's okay uh and then the wagon counters those were kind of neat because where are they here we go weapon halter right weapons containers so that's how they, remember, that's how they deployed. Uh, but here's that hole that you can turn it into a trailer, a cargo trailer on the battlefield and flip it over. So there you go. And then see, there's the single use FT, which is interesting. Uh, other than that, you know, the, bat the battlefield work, it gives you some LOS examples, gives you the terrain uh, examples. So that new terrain, you know, it's easy to find, it's easy to work into the main rules. It's really actually pretty well done. I, I kind of like that. Um, one thing, last thing I want to point out is for that aircraft movement, the Stukas have, oh, what was it, 100 and something movement points, right? You have to start somewhere on the north map and fly in, and then you pay movement points to do particular things. So a strafing run costs six. Uh, let's see, bombing is 48 movement points. Um, and then every other aerial is one. And you ha because you have to leave the map in the turn you enter, you're basically going to start somewhere, run that straight line of your flight path, right? Spend 48 points to bomb and make sure you have enough to get off the map or turn and get off or whatever it is, right? Uh, so that's kind of interesting. A little bit of planning makes that scenario, that first scenario, a little bit more interesting than, yeah, I'm just going to roll my planes in and, and bomb you. No, it's it's a little bit more complicated than that, which is which is kind of neat, right? Um, I particularly wanted this module. I've, I'm a little fascinated with the pair drop on Crete. Uh, it just seems, you know, just the, the whole idea of dropping in with no weapons just is crazy to me and then going and find him. So and they didn't do that again, right? Um, but, you know, and the terrain has always uh, intrigued me as well. I've got a couple of games on the side on the subject. Uh, they're more larger operational style, right? Company and level and above games. But this is pretty cool. Who doesn't want to play tactical, you know, uh, fights in this terrain, which is varied, right? I like the fact that there's a lot of terrain to fight over, so... All, all in, I think this is probably a really good module to pick up if you can find it. Um, it just looks really interesting. I think the, if they do the the next one, the, the uh, Malim Airfield, I think that'll be really cool too. Uh, I think that's about all I've got to say on this one. Uh, you know, this has uh, been ATSFE Battlefield Walkaround on The Devil's Vineyard, Heraklion, 1941. If you've got any questions or comments, I'd be happy to hear them. Uh, stay tuned. For the next one. See ya.